So I've gone ahead and awakened every fruit in the game just to figure out which one's the best. All right, so going in chronological order, first off, we have the flame fruit. Now, actually, the flame fruit is notoriously insanely easy to awaken. So maybe we can even do it solo. <laughs> All right, so I've already gone ahead and awakened the entire thing. So let's check out some of these moves right here. So first off, we have the blue fire pellets, which actually sounds insane. 4,560 damage is absolutely bonkers. Can I just say? Like, that's actually kind of insane. All right, next up, we got the prominence burst. Let's come in boom. Huh? Wait, awakened flame fruit actually kind of stupid. <laughs> now, of course, guys, it's also a Logia, which ah, doesn't work in, um, in these actual raids. But uh, yeah, trust me. Normal Normally, these guys wouldn't be able to slice me. Dude, this is already going insanely stupid, and we only have two moves so far. All right, well, Flaming Vortex. Let's see. What is this going to do? Okay, we make a little cool, goofy pose. Oh, my God. Wait, I just went for a freaking ginormous jump. Flaming Vortex! <laughs> Dude, this is an actually good fruit. All right, next up, Hell's Core! I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet. I boom! Dude, that is literally a nuke. <laughs> Dude, flame fruit kind of insane, man. Also, we still have our flight ability that we would even have unawakened. The unawakened one is literally slower than walking, by the way. I think it might be the worst flying ability in the entire game, but the rocket flight is actually pretty insane. Like, it's pretty decent. It's kind of fast. Now, guys, of course, the flame fruit is one of the cheapest fruits in the entire game you can awaken. Actually, it is the cheapest one. So, for literally a starter fruit, I think it goes kind of insane. Like, this is actually pretty good. I wonder if I can actually finish the raid. Ah! Dude, every single one of these attacks just does so much AoE. Flaming ball of nuke. Thank you very much. Dude, that is so much damage. All right. Now, sadly, whenever you do a solo awakening, dude, it's so freaking hard. I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But honestly, at no point did I think I was going to die so far. <laughs> it's really easy. Can I stand in lava? Oh, maybe I can. Ah, ah, holy. No, you cannot. Okay. So that is a different fruit that actually prevents lava damage. <laughs> Jeez, man. Island three cleared. We're already off to island four. Almost the final one. Six minutes, 50 left. This is not looking good. Now, actually, this is a really good fruit to actually use on people on the ground while you're in the air. Like, a lot of these attacks have crazy AoE, especially the C and X. Look at this. I better boom. I better boom. Dude, that is so much damage. <laughs> Come on! Oh my god, how are they not dead? All right, there it is. Final island. We have four minutes left. It's gonna be really close. Holy crap, dude. The awakened boss is so strong. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, that's the old awakened... He uses old awakened flame, dude. What? That's the wrong freaking... <laughs> what? Oh, dude, run, 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 run. Oh, God. Oh, dude, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this. I've got two minutes left. 25 seconds. How much damage left? Dude, it's actually so close. No! And that's time. No! Dude, I was so close, man. Well, anyway, I would say that the flame rate is actually one of the easiest in the game. And actually, I really like the flame fruit. Especially if you compare it to how much better it gets from Unawakened. So, actually, I'm going to throw it into the, the, the B tier. Okay. It's nothing compared to some of these other ones. <laughs> All right. All right, then off for the next one, which is actually gonna be the ice fruit. Yes, baby. The ice fruit. So let's eat this puppy. Ash, come. Nom, 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 nom. All right, let me make sure I got this awakened. There it is. So as far as I know, the ice raid is actually also pretty easy. Like it's not one when it's all that difficult and actually less scary than the flame break because there's no like scary <laughs> There's those scary things like lava everywhere, okay? Bro, that final boss there with the lava, it was a little scary. Now, the actual ice fruit itself, though, let, let's have a look right here. So, a scrap and a boom! That did 16. Whoa! I was gonna say, that's not that great, but I think that was like five enemies. 16,000 damage. That's pretty decent. I really want to know how much damage that is on like a single enemy because it actually seems pretty good. Now, actually, the ice fruit is the first fruit in the game that gets a very handy little ice staff. So, actually, you can just slice people like you have a sword. And it's actually super, super handy to have. So, let's see. Single damage! Z ability, 2,700. That is terrible. <laughs> Also, guys, by the way, I keep everything consistent, okay? Max fruit points. I actually want to make sure that that actually is that weak because that is terrible. Yeah, 2,700 damage is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> All right, then, well, a, a glacial surge maybe is a lot better. 7K damage for two of them. So that's like three and a half K each. That's a little bit better. It's a little better. I like it. I like it. All right, now here we go. Okay, boom, this way. Bada boom. And actually what we're going to be using here is ice skating. Actually, if you didn't know, freaking ice fruits, you get ice skate just on the water or on the ground. And it's actually 
like one of my favorite ways to get around in the game, even though it's not that fast, but it's just cool, you know? All right, let's see. Glacial Surge. Yeah, a Glacial Surge is, it's a little better, but it's still not great. It's not looking too, too hot. <laughs> All right, um, a Frozen Dragon. Bada boom. Yo, wait a second. Yo, that was actually kind of good. Now, guys, the thing about the Ice Fruit that actually makes it kind of viable for PvP is that everything has like crazy stuns. Like, look at that. This dude is literally sat there, can't do anything. I could just hit things. I don't even have to be good at PvP and I can just literally chain these stuns together because they're pretty much like they're kind of free. <laughs> like that dude is just stunned right there. Like, yeah, I can do whatever I want with him. All right, single enemy damage on C. Let's go. 3k damage. Okay, it's not great, but it's not terrible. All right, absolute zero. Let's go. Boom. So the absolute zero is the notorious ability that... Ah! Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. It's the notorious ability that is crazy good for stunning people in PvP, dude. I cannot believe I just died there. I got stunned the way I'm trying to stun them. So yeah, if you look at this right here, oh, I gotta wait. Hit them with that, and then we can just hit them with like anything we want, really. Like you can kind of just stun whatever you want together. It's kind of insane. All right, let's see. Do damage on C, three thousand. All right, V ability does about three thousand two hundred. So yeah, if I would have to rank this fruit, I don't think I would be able to put it as high as the flame fruit because you know it's just kind of weak, but. Honestly, because it is really, really good for gaining levels, I'm gonna put it in the C tier. Because yeah, with this ice staff, you can simply just melt through enemies like forever and ever and ever like this. Like there's only one stat that I need to level right now, which is my fruit. It makes leveling up early in the game very, very handy. But, oh, ice fruit, oh, <laughs> don't mind if I do. Actually, what is my gacha? What is my gacha luck today? Give me something good, baby. Give me something good, baby. Oh, yo, love fruit, actually good. Okay, that's actually nice. All right, here we go. So next up, you're gonna to be eating the sand fruit. Nom, 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 nom. All right, so the sand fruit unawakened is really flipping bad, like actually terrible. <laughs> and actually, I don't really remember how good it is when you get it awakened. So let's have a look. You know what? I'll sa I'll sacrifice. I'll sacrifice the sand fruit for the sand fruit awakening. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Desert blade. Skip Three thousand six hundred. Okay, we're back off to a decent start. Okay, the ice fruit. Yeah, a little a little weak for me, but uh, dude, this is this is looking a little more like it. Bang! Yes. All right, so we don't have a sword like the ice fruit, though, which is going to make killing these guys a little bit different. A little bit more difficult, but we do have some other abilities like the sand coffin. Now, I think, yeah, you can only do it on a single guy, and it does 3,000 damage. So it's a little, a little bit limited in what you're able to do with it, and it's mostly decent for PvP, but hey, at least it deals pretty decent damage. <laughs> and actually, I think with it, you can actually kind of like, okay, you cannot do... Okay, yeah, you can actually kind of combo it together pretty easy as well. So yeah, it, it can be pretty good. All right, sandstorm. Okay, just deals a ton of damage. Oh my god. Just keeps spinning in circles, I guess. Bop! So I gotta be honest with you, the sand fruit isn't really my favorite awakening in the game. Uh, you know, this had a lot of hype around it recently, but actually recently, it was like a year ago. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, it's just not my favorite to actually PvP with or even play around with in general. Because it feels except for that move. I actually really like that move. <laughs> the deep sand is actually kind of sick. But yeah, the sand fruit kind of feels like one of those early game fruits that you know didn't really get updated yet. And uh yeah. It's just a little bit clunky. All right, now we do get a flight ability, which is very slow. <laughs> I actually think it might be faster to walk. It is extremely slow. All right, so let's check out some of these abilities that I haven't been able to test yet. So, okay, the C ability, 2,200 damage. Wait, did I do that right? Okay, wait, actually, that did 4,000 damage, the C ability. That actually is pretty decent. All right, okay, well, let's see the, the V ability. A -ba boom On a single enemy, I think that just did 5k damage. That is actually insanely good. Okay, maybe the damage on the sand fruit isn't all that bad. Okay, sadly, with the sand fruit, you can't really spam very much, so uh, yeah, it's kind of like doing one attack at a time and just waiting for a sec. Like, I'm spamming right now buttons and I can't even do anything yet. <laughs> all right, third island. Now, the awakening of the sand fruit is actually not all that easy. I would say it's like a little bit harder than the other two that we've done, so uh, yeah, keep that in mind as well. So yeah, you know what? I think I've seen enough. Take me out, boys! Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, not gonna lie here. This is gonna be our first like real stinker. I'm gonna throw it into the detail. I would take the ice fruit over the sand fruit every day of the week. That would definitely Definitely not be my first pick for an awakening. <laughs> so next up, we actually have the dark fruit. Now, the dark fruit is actually pretty freaking cool, in my opinion. So I'm stoked about this one. Eat her up. Nom, 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 nom. So let's have a look right here. So we got the dimensional slash our uh, abyssal darkness. Pretty much a bunch of really cool words. Let's check out this actual damage here. So, 3,000 damage. Not bad. Not too, actually, not great, but not too bad. We got the abyssal darkness. 3,200 damage as well. So, uh, what? Once again, the damage is a little questionable, but nothing too bad. Endless hole. Okay, that one's actually... Oh, wait, I gotta hold it. All right, endless hole. All right, 3,300 damage again. 
and ugh. Okay, it's not looking all that great. <laughs> all right, world of darkness. Okay, actually, that did a lot of damage. Wait, what? How many things did I hit with that? I don't even know. All right, world of darkness. Come on, one more time. Alarge. Okay, let's see. 5,100 damage. Okay, that one is actually pretty flipping good. Yeah, the, the ghastly step is pretty much just like, yeah, what do you call it? The, 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 the teleportability. Yeah, it's not that great. And yeah, guys, honestly, I would kind of say with this fruit that it might actually be better in the anime than the actual game. <laughs> but hey, at least the actual raid itself, as far as I know, is actually not too difficult. So if you don't want to awaken it, it's not going to be all that hard. But I've seen enough of this. I want to move on to the next one because honestly, I couldn't justify throwing this any higher than the C tier. And I know it can be really good for PvP, but uh, it's not my favorite PvP fruit to use, you know? Just being honest here. All right, then next up, we have what we've all been waiting for. We're going to be ranking a pretty good one. <laughs> We're going to be trying out the light fruit here. Now, this fruit is literally one of the most notorious fruits in the entire game. Now, literally, this fruit is insanely famous for one ability alone already, which is the Shining Flight, which is the fastest, I repeat, fastest flying ability in the entire game. And it, it, it is really flipping fast. <laughs> but then, guys, we actually got to talk about how it's actually very, very notoriously great for PvP, early game and late game. Honestly, you can use this fruit, like this fruit right here from the very start to the very end of the game. Like, look at this. I'm just slicing this dude. Just once again, I got a freaking, like, like spear thing. Oh, dude, I'm being attacked. Please don't. Please don't attack me. I don't want to fight you. I don't want to fight you. You know what? Let's just get into our awakenings. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to, you know, not get bothered for a second. <laughs> All right, so the actual fruit itself is also known for being just insanely good for, like, PvP, PvE. I mean, anything you can name. So here we go. Divine Arrow. Bang! 3,000 damage, but it comes out insanely quick. And actually, I think you can actually charge it up now. Yeah, I just charge it up. It actually goes insanely stupid with the amount of damage it can do, man. All right, Hand of the Emperor. Just a literal laser beam. And actually, a really, really good stun in PvP. You can literally stun lock your en like your enemies in place for a while. Oh, dude, I'm so excited about this. A light beam, speed destroyer. Bang! Dude, even the actual Awakening Room itself is one of my favorites. And actually, pretty easy, all things considered. Like, it is definitely one of the easier Awakenings in the game. All right, there we go. Now we get into the real boys. A wrath of the gods! And yeah, just once again, insane stuns and insane damage, man. Like, I really cannot think of many other fruits that are this versatile. They can literally, like, this fruit can literally do kind of like everything. All right, next island. Here we go. All right, let's see. If we charge this fully up, how much damage can we do on a single enemy? 5,000 damage. 5,200 damage on a single enemy, bro. Are you absolutely kidding me right now? All right, hand of the emperor. Let's see. Okay, actually, I end up getting stunned in the middle. You know what? It's kind of hard to figure out the damage numbers in one of these raids. Okay, <laughs> I just kind of want to show them off. All right, here we go. A hand of the Emperor. How, how much damage is it going to do? Dude, that is that is insane. 5,000 damage on, on another move. That is ridiculous. Fully charge this. 5,200 damage. We're already over 1,000 something damage. Or 10,000 something damage, dude. Freaking insane. All right, Lightspeed Destroyer. Bang. Easy 4,000 damage. Dude, are you, in, are you actually joking right now? All right, there we go. Now, let's see. Wrath of the God. Dude, another 5K damage, dude. This this is, this is the most ridiculous fruit or one of the most ridiculous fruits in the game. If you want to have a fruit that's really nice for PvP, PvE, and literally you name it, it is good for everything. And you know what? For that reason, it is our first S tier, okay? It is our very first flipping S tier, dude. This, this fruit is ridiculous. <laughs> if you find the light fruit at the start of the game, you can literally keep it for the rest of it and you'll be like able to PvP, PvE, you name it, and it'll be sick. I mean, some people say it's a little overrated, but I don't think so. I think that's perfectly rated because it is ridiculous. All right, next up, we got the magma fruit. Also, it's a Logia, of course. Actually, magma is also a Logia. Both, so far, I think every single one of these has actually been a Logia. <laughs> All right, now for the magma fruit, I might have to show a little bit of bias because if I'm being honest, this is my favorite fruit in the entire game. I freaking love the magma fruit because it's the most powerful fruit ever. Oh, I'm being, I'm like, what is this, man? It is the most powerful fruit in the entire game. How Just how powerful is that, you might ask? I actually don't know if I can even test the damage on these guys right here because I think a single attack might actually kill them. <laughs> Is it? Oh, no. 16,000 damage on a single attack so far. Yes, guys. 16,000. 
thousand damage. All right, X ability. Now this one is my least ability of them all. So it's about two thousand damage, and it's mostly just kind of like a, a way to combo or something, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. Only two thousand damage on this fruit. Like literally, my first ability does a you know a quick measly little uh, like easy ten k damage, thirteen k there. It's always a little bit different. Uh, two thousand damage there. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, um, next up we got the great magma hound, and actually this is gonna just put lava all over our arm and it's coming around when you launch it. It's just a giant blob of lava that kind of lingers around and actually does decent damage as well. Another four thousand six hundred. Man, this fruit, I freaking love it. <laughs> all right, next up. We got the volcanic storm. Actually, the AOE is so big. I hit two guys there. <laughs> we'll just kill him with this one real quick. All right, let's have a look at this. Oh, wait, this guy is killing our guys. Thank you very much, sir. Can you now leave me? Uh, bada boom. All right, let's see how much damage is this going to do. Already above 10K pro. 11K damage, man. Are you actually joking right now? All right, now actually for this one, our flight ability also does tons of damage. So uh, if, if this guy could stop killing our guys, we can launch it at that guy when we stop flying like that and miss because I didn't aim properly. All right, here we go. Just fly and we just bop, hit him with that just, i think it does like 4k damage at most yeah like 4k damage almost and yeah so far dude this fruit is freaking insane actually something i kind of recently learned in a kit video uh yes kit of all places is that technically the volcanic store might actually have the longest range in the entire game because you can actually fly up infinitely high and when you actually launch the attack like this uh it will pretty much just keep falling down until it actually hits the ground like that and then it will finally explode so yeah technically you can kill someone from like 10 million miles away now the awakening itself is actually also pretty reasonable with how difficult it is just for the final boss keep in mind he does the same amount of damage you do okay <laughs> you can literally almost take out your entire health bar in a single attack if you don't keep moving around there guys sadly i am also gonna have to criticize the magma fruit a little bit because sadly it is not that good for pvp it's insanely easy to dodge and uh yeah just for that reason alone i couldn't just simply give this an s tier even though you can even do things like walk on water and lock Lava. Yes, you guys, you can walk on lava without taking damage. It is just simply not going to be able to reach the S tier status just because for PvP, it is just too difficult to use and not that great. So for those reasons, even though I would like to throw the magma fruit right there, it's going to be an easy A tier. <laughs> All right, the next up, we're going to start getting into some more spicy stuff like the legendaries. Starting off with the quake fruit. Wait, why am I eating the quake fruit in a different raid? What am I doing? Oh, oh my God. All right, guys, so with these fruits, one of the things we're actually ranking them on is how much better they are than the originals. So <laughs> with the quake fruits, that leaves us with not all that much better. I would go as far as to say that I actually, I think I might have even unawakened it because I don't like, I, I really don't like it. Okay, I actually left it awakened. At least that's good. Yeah, guys, the actual, actual awakened quake fruit, you would think is insanely powerful. But look at this, Z ability, 3,800 damage. Not terrible, but really for a legendary fruit that is awakened, it is not that great. Okay, next up. Also, by the way, quick side note, only four attacks, which is pretty pathetic in my opinion. <laughs> All right, next up, we got the air crusher. Uh, -a -boom. We launch a ball of damage, which is 3,500 damage. Look at this, guys. Z, 3,800. X, 3,500. It's really not that powerful. And actually, the spartial shockwave, when you actually launch it, once again, it's about 3,700 damage. It's just, it really is just nothing to write home about. Now, one of my actual favorite abilities in the whole game is the sequence. You can actually launch it on someone through three and a half thousand damage. And when all of these little waves come in, you just deal a ton of extra damage. Like each wave hitting is like an additional 6k damage, which is kind of insane. But for an awakening, that is not too easy or, you know, all that difficult either. Um, for only four abilities, I'm going to have to be completely honest with you guys and throw the awakened quake fruit in the D tier. <laughs> I know it can be decent for PvP, but that is not the entire game, man. A fruit with only four attacks. That is pathetic. All right, then. Well, let's hope we get something a little bit better. Oh, we got the Buddha fruit. Yeah, boy. Now, I think it's safe to say that the Buddha fruit is notorious for uh, actually not being all that insane of a fruit, but instead just being absolutely cracked at grinding for like just any levels because you can just become a giant. And when you're actually in giant mode, yeah, you take 
barely any damage. You have like, I think it's like 50% damage negation or something like that. You just take way less damage. And not only just that, while you're actually big, you can actually also keep punching. And even with some glitching, you can actually get your weapons to become huge, which I was just not able to do. But yeah, imagine if my weapons were huge right now and I had the same range of weapon was big. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, that is the Buddha fruit that everybody knows. Just punching away or just slicing away with a sword. But we're going to be focusing on the actual fruit itself. So here we go, starting off with the heavenly impact. A shkababoosh! 3,700 damage. Actually, not too shabby. I'm also going to make sure that I actually have this fruit awakened because this is one of those fruit that actually has some pretty good abilities when you unawaken them. <laughs> yeah, I have everything awakened. We're good, we're good, we're good. All right, next up, we got that light annihilation. Charge it up! Bang! When you actually fully charge it up, 7,000 damage, which is ridiculous. But usually in PvP, you can never really get that off. In PvE, you can, of course. But yeah, if you don't charge it up and just launch it, boom! Wait, it always does... Wait, it always does 7k damage? Damage? Yo, wait, I didn't know about that. 7k damage is kind of insane. <laughs> what? Actually, guys, the C move is the one that people popularly actually unawaken. And that's because that is actually the Buddha leap. So actually, I'm actually going to check that ability out as well because it's so common to unawaken it. So one quick little random side note. When you are actually a Buddha, when you do your just double jumps, you can actually go insanely high, insanely quickly because you get way more height per jump. But yeah, that's why people like the C move because you can actually do a leap that launches you forward like crazy. So yeah, if you're using the Buddha fruit not for its ability, that is a popular one to actually throw on. And just because I'm curious, damage? Oh, 3,000. 3,300. Now, the next one is actually even gonna be hard to like rank on damage because the AoE is so big. I think I'll hit multiple guys, but I'm just gonna try not to. It actually just launches a ton of like attacks all the way around you. I just did 10k damage. 10,000 damage on a single guy just by simply pressing V. It's, it, it's honestly kind of insane. And actually, I'm starting to realize that this fruit might be insanely powerful. I really thought mo people mostly use it for its ability to just punch other people. Oh, actually, I forgot about one ability, and that's actually the dash. So when you actually uh, do it, boop, you just kind of dash forward as a Buddha. You cannot even do it un -Buddhified, So yeah, it's not that great. But guys, one thing I have to mention is that if you want to get yourself awakened Buddha, you will want to have a couple of awakened Buddhas because it is actually pretty well known for being the absolute hardest awakening in the entire game. So yeah, it's safe to say that you wouldn't be let off the hook easy with this one. Dude, that is so much damage. <laughs> but yeah, all things considered, where am I gonna place the Buddha fruit? Well, it's gonna have to be an easy S tier. And actually an S tier above the light fruit because I think it is literally just that ridiculous. It is one of the most ridiculous fruits in the entire game, period. And there is a very good reason why you constantly see people using it. <laughs> Alrighty then. Next up, we got the spider fruit. Now, this one right here actually got a recent complete revamp. Everything about it changed, unawakened and awakened. But I think most of the attacks didn't really all like get all that many changes. So here we go. Spider fruit. Oh boy. First off, we have the thermal laceration. We just 3,600 damage. Pretty nice, pretty easy. Next up, we got the silk prison. We launch it. It grabs everything inside of it. Kabang! 3,700 damage. Eternal white, which is just bang. Oh, wait, actually, does that do 5k damage? Whoa, dude, look at that, dude. It looks insane, and it even does a ton of damage. So yeah, I quite like that one. Uh-oh, we are being chased down. Well, at least we got the spider highway. We turned into freaking Spider-Man. Let's go. Whoosh. Dude, I actually really, really love this change. This is like the one ability that they completely changed. And dude, I freaking love it. And actually, I think I might be able to get, get away from this PvP. Yeah, I just got away. All right, well, back to what we were doing. Is he going to follow me? Yeah, he's totally following me. Look at him. He's going to try to... Oh, oh, well, too bad. Back in safe zone. Leave me alone. Okay. Wow, is he actually gonna? Wow, he actually is. Wait. Oh, that's actually... What a nice guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, heavenly punishment. We launched that puppy. And dude, it is just like, what? 9,000? 400 damage does crazy amounts of damage actually pretty good in pvp as far as i know and like hard to escape from but yeah dude i think it's safe to say that with that all considered the spider fruit is gonna get itself a whopping uh, a tier below the magma fruit because <laughs> i really like the magma fruit <laughs> all righty then baby we've got three fruits left and actually i don't have one of them <laughs> do i have it like perm oh it actually do all right next up we got the perm rumble fruit i right, or actually just 
any rumble fruit, as a matter of fact. All right, so here we go. Starting off with the lightning beast, dude. Can I just say, before we even start, I really like the ability to use lightning. I bet a boom! 2,800 damage. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I should have said that uh, before, because if I said it after, you'd laugh at me, dude. The lightning fruit, it's um, question questionably powerful. Uh, start Next up, we got the thunderstorm. A bada boom, which actually does pretty decent damage. 4,600 right there, actually. All right, dude. Okay, we're, it's getting better. It's getting better. Okay. All right. A bada boom! 3,000 or 4,600 again. So that seems to be pretty consistent, which is actually kind of good. All right, next up, sky judgment! 4,200 damage. Pretty good, pretty good. And finally, thunderbolt destruction. Zing! A bada boom! 5,600 damage. Let's go. Now, I actually know that there's a lot of people that really like PvPing with the Rumble Fruits. One of my good friends, actually, Turtle, he constantly uses it. But I don't know. I never seem to be able to replicate it because maybe I'm bad. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing. But apparently, it can be pretty good. Also, the actual F ability is really cool. It's like, uh, you know, o Tracer from Overwatch. You get like three charges. You can kind of dash around like boop, boop, boop. And it like slowly recharges. So like, there you go. Back, back, back. Boop, boop, boop. It's actually pretty cool. Oh, wait. Did I forget? to mention that the actual spider raid is actually pretty difficult. <laughs> yeah, the spider raid is pretty hard. And actually, the rumble raid is kind of like mid-tier difficulty as well. It's definitely not the easiest and also like not the absolute hardest, but it's not all that easy, like all things considered. But yeah, I gotta say, I like using this fruit even though it's not super powerful. And uh, if I would have to properly place it with my knowledge and ability, I have to throw it in there with the, with the flame fruit, just above the flame fruit. You know what I mean? Alrighty then. Now we're getting into the real big boys the real real big boys starting off with the phoenix fruit now this is actually the first fruit in the game that is gonna have an advanced awakening so you're gonna be in the third c or you're gonna have a friend start the raid and it's like a whole thing okay it's pretty difficult but after you actually get it awakened this fruit is actually pretty freaking cool so starting off we have the cremation cannon a -a boom very nice 3600 damage we actually get the blue flames ability which is like it heals me but it also can deal like a crazy ridiculous amount of damage to other people so like look at this guy he's just taking a ton of damage now in pvp like this is kind of impossible to hit but in pve it can actually be kind of insane next up we got the flame exodus it's got a bada boom 3900 damage we also get the swift flight which is just a actually really nice ability to fly around and actually as you just saw we have our very first tap ability so when we tap the screen or just click pretty much uh, you can actually do an attack so click on the guy bada bang we can deal a ton of damage but all of this stuff is pretty irrelevant when you forget about the fact that you actually have the blazing plumage, which turns you into a proper phoenix. So yeah, when you actually use the blazing plumage, every single one of your previous attacks, this gets way more crazy and way more powerful and way bigger AOE. And yeah, like look at this stuff, dude. That is a huge damage bubble that just stays around for like ever and ever. Uh, flame Exodus. Now, I think all of these attacks actually deal about the same amount of damage, but they're just way cooler. So yeah, it's it, all around. I would say that the, the, the Phoenix fruit is pretty cool. Now, actually awakening it isn't even all that difficult. Like I, I you would assume that it's going to be way more difficult for a legendary raid or an advanced raid or whatever it's called, but it's not. It's actually pretty doable. <laughs> now, when it comes to the actual damage, I'm not too impressed with the actual Phoenix fruit. So for the actual tier list, I'm going to throw it in two low A tier. It's like right right in between these two, if I'm being honest. Like, it's like either here or there, but it could be either or, kind of depending on how much you like the fruit. But honestly, it's not there. It's not that good. <laughs> Alrighty then, we have our final fruit. <laughs> now, if I would have to say what this fruit is actually famous for, I would say it's probably dying in it to it in about 2.5 seconds, dude. This fruit can kill you insanely quickly. And yeah, first off, let's start off with the actual tap ability. You can just kind of punch people like this. And it's actually pretty cool. It can actually be pretty decent at dealing damage as well. Boop. Alrighty, the next up, we have our first ability, the missile jab. Launch that. Dude, giga arm. A bada bang! 3,800 damage. Now, that might actually seem not that crazy. And that's because that is probably the least crazy attack of the entire fruit. Next up, we got the pastry river. A bang! Boom, 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 boom. A da boom, 4,500 damage. Now, actually, it has like two different ways of doing the ability. So look, if I'm standing on the ground and then I launch it, it's like a huge arm and it goes like doink. But actually, if you're in the air while you launch it, it goes and does like a whole like punching around thing, which is which is also pretty cool. All right, then next up, we got the piercing cloths clothesline, which is pretty much used like 
<laughs> oh my god, dude. It is so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you just start rolling around in your dough form, and pretty much the first thing you run into, you grab it, swing it around, and slam it into the ground. It is absolutely ridiculously insane. <laughs> All right, then. And then finally, we have probably the ability that is the most famous for the dough fruit, and it's actually the dough fist fusali uh, latte. And yeah, it just allows you to pretty much punch people around like crazy like this for 7,200 damage. And then they're even left in a single spot and you can just combo out of it, combo into it. It is just, it's just really honestly a insanely ridiculous fruit, especially for PvP. For PvE, it's not that crazy. PvP though, it is absolutely monstrous. And yeah, then finally we have the F ability, which just kind of makes you go into like a little like spiky ball thing. And you can actually damage people with this. Actually, I'm going the wrong way. What am, what am I doing? Ah! Yeah, when you actually roll over people, you can actually deal damage. So like this, boom, as you can see, 500 damage. It's not that great. And you can actually roll over buildings, which is pretty cool. Now for the actual Doe Awakening, it is honestly way less difficult than you would kind of assume it is. It's kind of just like mid range, not too hard, not too easy. But dude, this fruit is absolutely ridiculous. And just for the amount of times that I've been killed by it in about two seconds, I'm gonna have to give it an easy S tier, baby. <laughs>